Okay, our next task in removing the intake manifold will just simply be to unbolt it from the cylinder head. There are eight bolts. In this case, it looks like two bolts and six nuts that go across the top here. And then there's one underneath each one of these sets. So there's four that run across the bottom. You can see one right here. They might be a little difficult to get to the ones at the bottom. So a, a long extension might help, especially in the back there. Once that's loose, we're going to wiggle it, maybe tap it if we need to, but we're not going to put any screwdrivers or anything in there to pry it. We don't want to scratch that soft aluminum seal on it. We've disconnected this. The bolts are pretty easy to come off. The hard ones were the ones underneath. They, they're just a difficult angle to get to. But the uh, intake manifold is connected by a hose back in, in the back there. I'm going to leave it here until I take the cylinder head out. Then I'll have easier access to the hose clamp that's in the back holding it in place so I can take this out and clean it as well. You'll notice that the fuel lines are a little floppy here. Um, in order to lean the uh, intake manifold back, there is a 10 millimeter bolt on a clamp that uh, the fuel lines are clamped actually to the intake manifold in the back. And that just kind of stiffened everything up. So by undoing that, it allowed the intake manifold to come back. The fuel line kind of flops out of the way better. Now I'm ready to start the other side. All right, here I am on the driver's side of the engine. And this is looking at the uh, exhaust manifold system that we're going to have to remove. There is a heat shield here. That's the first thing we're going to do is remove this heat shield. It's pretty simple. Should be just a couple bolts down here and here. Looks like I'm missing one. There's a nut here. This stuff should come off pr pretty simple. There is the exhaust manifold after I just took the heat shield off. So, a lot of times these bolts that are on here, because they get so hot, uh, he heating up and cooling down, heating up and cooling down, these things get really stuck on here good. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some penetrating fluid on there. I've just got some liquid wrench penetrating oil. I'm going to put some of this on those things and let them sit over overnight. Um, I'll probably come out and put some more on, maybe a little bit later tonight. I like to give them a good soaking. That way it just makes them a little easier to get off tomorrow. Um, sometimes these things snap off, I've been told, and I haven't had this happen. But I, I want to make sure that I give it the best chance I can. So, a little penetrating fluid is just a tip. Okay, we're under the car looking at the three different bolts that need to be removed for the to remove the bottom of the exhaust manifold from the exhaust system. You can see one bolt there that connects the exhaust manifold uh, base to the motor mount. Then you can see there are see one bolt there and one bolt there also connecting the exhaust manifold to the motor or to the, the exhaust system. All three of those need to be undone. Put some penetrating fluid on them the night before and let them soak overnight. That'll help you loosen them up. Now that I've loosened up the bolts that are holding that man exhaust manifold to the rest of the exhaust system down there, I can go ahead and loosen up all the nuts and bolts that hold the exhaust manifold to the cylinder head itself. Again, I put some penetrating fluid on all of these last night and then this, today I've used a breaker bar just to simply break them all loose. And they weren't too hard. I was concerned I might break off a stud or a bolt there and didn't break anything off. Everything went smooth. All right, I've gone ahead and I've removed the exhaust manifold. Here's the gasket that was on there. We can pull that old gasket off. We won't be reusing that. Um, I have not unhooked the oxygen sensor from the exhaust manifold itself. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to unplug it from here. It'll be much easier just to do that. Also, I'm going to remove this bolt here, which will allow me to pull this coolant tube out of the way. Just get that out of the way and make it easier to work. All right, we've got that coolant bar out of the way. Just took a good yank. That thing popped right out. 
Next thing, just to make some room, we need to remove this strut bar, strut support bar. So it should just be these three bolts on each end and that should lift up and out of the way that's just going to give us room to lift this up and out of the way as well this is going to be heavy um, after we remove this then we want to come back here and look into removing this looks like it should just be these two bolts here we'll get that popped up out of the way okay i've removed the two bolts that are here in the cam camshaft position sensor i'm also going to remove the bolt here, this is the actual sensor itself. So I'm going to remove this bolt and pull this sensor out. I've removed these two bolts here that are part of the cover. There's also a bolt right here that I'm going to probably have to remove as well. And this is a different kind of bolt. So you'll need a different sort of, like a Torx head uh, bit for your, your socket for this one. So I've removed the bolt from the back of the camshaft sensor, position sensor, and let's see here, I don't know if you can see on that very well, but it is definitely a different, different bit. It takes one of these little star bits, um, kind of star shaped bit, I think that's, I think that's a, not quite a torque, I think it's a little bit different. Anyway, I use that to get that out. Okay, I'm gonna reinsert the bolt that goes into the crankshaft. And I'm gonna give the crankshaft a 90 degree clockwise turn. Um, and I'm gonna to do that to prevent any interference between the pistons and the valves when I'm taking any of this apart. So just a 90 degrees clockwise turn. Make sure never to turn it counterclockwise. All right, now it's time for the camshaft bearing bolts and studs to be removed. That's going to allow us to get to the bolts that actually hold in the cylinder head to the rest of the body or the rest of the block here. So there's a certain order you want to remove these. Uh, we actually took two of them out already down there, probably out of order, but it's not going to hurt at this point. We also took these three out earlier when we were removing the guide, the guide for the, uh, the uh, small timing chain that was up here. So the order we're going to remove these is going to, we're going to start here in this corner, we're going to go here, here, we're going to move all the way to the back, we're going to move that one and that one, then we're going to switch over to the side and remove this one and this one, and we're usually working from the outside towards the center. Then we're going to come back all the way back up, we're going to go to the second set, remove those, we're going to remove those, jump back here, we're going to remove these and these. Come over here, remove this and this. And we're going to jump back up. Remove this one, this one, that one, and that one. That should remove allow us to remove each one of those. Important thing here. Remember how we're keeping them sorted. Use an egg carton. Draw a map on a piece of cardboard or in a scratch book or something. Keep track of where each one of these bolts goes. All right. <clears throat> All right, I removed all of the bolts and the, the studs that were in here. Now I'm going to remove the bearing caps, which are these things here. As you can see, they're all on there. Notice that they're all marked. This one's marked with an I2. Notice this one's marked with an E2. Let's think about it. Intake side, exhaust side. I3, E3. Intake 4, exhaust 4. That'll help you remember where they go. So let's go ahead and remove those. All right, and the last part here is pull off the front bearing cover, and now we've got the camshafts exposed, and we'll be able to lift those straight up and out. One thing we want to note is the exact position of those camshafts. See where everything is? Just make sure you note everything. Look at everything you can on here. Notice where the notches are back here for the camshaft position sensor. Just everything you can pay attention to, take pictures of, just notice it all right now. Then we're just gonna simply lift those camshafts right up and out. Our next step is we need to remove the lifters. The lifters are these parts you see here that the cams 
push on. Uh, the lifters are composed of a few different parts. We're going to remove each lifter in order, remembering exactly where they were. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight from the front left. Same thing on the front right. Uh, I've numbered, I've got a stack of Dixie cups here and I've numbered each one of them. We're going to set each lifter in a Dixie cup and, and then we're going to end up immersing it in oil to keep the lifters lubricated while the uh, head is being worked on. To get the lifters out, one little trick I found is you can use a magnet. They are magnetic. And so you can lift them up with a magnet. Just go ahead and do that and then set each one back down in the Dixie cup. So here we've got our cups with each one of our lifters in it. And I'm just going to put a little bit of oil in each one. Now that the lifters are out, we're ready to go ahead and remove the bolts that are holding the cylinder head to the engine block. There's a specific order to remove them. So we want to remove them in this order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Go ahead and do them in that order. Okay, now that I've removed all of the bolts holding the cylinder head to the engine block, I've got one left, one bolt left right here. And it's an odd bolt. I believe it's an M6. To look around through my bits to find an, an odd Torx type bit that would fit it. I'm going to remove that now and after that is out we should be able just to lift the head straight up and off. Here's the head. I've got it almost all the way removed. I found a little surprise when I started to move it. I still have a hose connected back here. We'll have to get that hose disconnected and I did connect or disconnect the electrical outlet that was stuck to it. Once I disconnect this hose and pull that off, this should just lift right out. Now I'm going to take that thing out and we're going to send it to the shop. Find out what's wrong with it. Well, there it is. There's the heart of my engine. You can see here those valves right here and here are stuck open a little bit. They are not closing all the way. And so this is where I was having no compression on, chain, on cylinder number two because of these valves. 